Welcome back to Recordology. This is going to be fun. This is a live show, actually, to begin with. However, I've designed it in such a way that it works as a standalone regular episode and a live program. So if you're watching the replay, you'll enjoy this just like any other show. It doesn't have the intro clip. It doesn't have the thank you members thing on there. i got to figure out how to do that in a live. That would be cool. But today we are, in addition to just chatting about what any of the live participants want to chat about, we are also going to be looking at my top eight favorite vinyl records, and I'm excited to share them with you. And I, I do this every year, and uh, my list may change here and there. There's some that will always be in the list, and there's some that may or may not make the list for that year. Uh, sometimes it's top eight, sometimes it's top five, sometimes it's top ten. But I just don't think we could do a Christmas season here on Recordology without first, or at least at some point, talking about records. Now, in addition to, I mean, I want this interactive. I want you engaged and involved, as we always do. But in, in terms of this show, I would love it for you, if you're watching live, to comment uh, about your favorite records, your comments about the records I'm showing. If you're watching the replay, same thing as well. Put in the comments down there below. I will be answering as many as I can. Uh, we've been doing daily shows on two channels this month, so it's been crazy. It's been crazy. And um, you just saw before you joined the live stream, for, you, for those of you that are watching live, the uh, trailer for our Vlogmas show. So if you want to see those daily vlog shows where we go to all kinds of cool events, definitely check out my wife's channel, Rain's Place. There is a link in the description below, and it's been a lot of fun. Since moving from Denver, to Orlando, we have really sort of amped up the overall experience. We have just added an incredible uh, refresh, as it were, to the activities that we are doing. Um, so everybody that is watching live, uh, feel free to you know just ask anything. It doesn't have to be about these, the topic of this show. We'll, we'll, we'll diverge and go anywhere we want to. Um, and I appreciate you being there. Lumpy Oatmeal Gaming, cool name, WHHS Entertainment, hello. To both of you. All right, first record. These are in no particular order, by the way. First record that I am going to put on my list for this year. And I want to sort of savor the discussion around these records. You guys are like, oh boy, this guy's already, you know, wordy and he wants to amp it up even more. We're going to go with the soundtrack to Rudolph the Red Nosed Rain Reindeer, the famous Rankin Bass television show from, was it 64? I want to say 64. This is a reprint, repress. Actually, maybe the original. I don't know if they did this. I think this is a reprint because um, I was trying to decide if they actually had a record of this back in the day. Based on what I'm seeing on the back, yes. So, um, DECA record. So, yeah, you know it's a repress. If they would bother to put DECA on there. If it was a brand new record, had never been made before, that would say UME on it. For, or at least MCA. It wouldn't say DECA. And, uh, yeah, so this features the voice of Burl Ives. A little bit of a Patsy Cline uh, uh, tie in there. She was a fan of his. Uh, so this is the original soundtrack and music. So one side are the vocal songs from the show, and the other side is the musical score. And I picked this up, oh gosh, man, four or five years ago. I think I, this is one of my, excuse me, it's one of my summertime Christmas record purchases. I always say that I, I get my best um, vinyl finds for Christmas during the summer and i think this is no exception so i, was, I think i bought uh, this for like 10 bucks it was a good deal um old radios welcome in the forgetter welcome in i like that name. greg welcome in greg you were asking about mrs recordology and the vlogmas show so have you gone over and subscribed to that channel yet if you haven't there's a link in the description below it's called rain's place so click on that and you'll be able to go over there and watch those videos and comment as well Old Radios has this. Ty says the Rudolph Red Nose Reindeer soundtrack is a great album. Have it on vinyl too. That's great. Yeah, this is awesome. So anyway, here's what kind of tipped me off to it being a reprint of an original is obviously the barcode. That's the indicator. It's a it's a reprint, but you know, on a brand new record or on a newly created record, I should say, they wouldn't have all this stuff with the original Decca, uh, you know, the R I A A and all this stuff. They wouldn't add that in there. So we've got lyrics to all of the songs, so you can sing along. And uh, we got a little copy here and uh, uh, produced for records by Milt Gabler. Yeah, musical TV spectacular. 
This originally came in a paper sleeve. I've upgraded to a rice paper line, Hudson High Five sleeve. <clears throat> Music and lyrics by Johnny Marks. What else was he known for? That's a good question. But anyway, that's um, going to be the first one on the list today. It's a good pressing. Um, I'm going to show it right there. Oh, we've got the uh, um, mono deca label. Now, does this say it's in stereo? Probably not, because, you know, why would they do that? There would be no reason to have a, a stereo recording on television back then. Um, but, yeah, when, when the DECA record, when the label says long play 33 at the top, that's the mono label. And when it says stereo, it's a stereo label. Now, some of the DECA reprints, for instance, the Patsy Cline Greatest Hits 2016, has the mono label, even though it's a stereo record, which is kind of strange. Okay, we'll set that aside right there. I record all your Christmas videos are awesome, my friend, or Christmas records. Thank you so much. I like the emojis down there. And uh, welcome in to everybody. Just want to say a huge thank you to everybody, whether you're watching live or watching the replay. We just are very appreciative of you guys spending time. I know with the daily videos this month, it's a lot of content. Sometimes that can be overwhelming. You're like, I want to watch, but I just don't have much time. I'm totally that way as well. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of Adam the Whoop. In fact, I got to meet him earlier this month at an event. Uh, I posted a picture in my community tab, and uh, that was a blast. But he puts out daily videos. So sometimes if I have a particularly busy day, I don't have time to watch a video, which can get um, – even weekly videos sometimes can be hard to keep up with. As time goes by fast. What sounds better, original monophonic or stereo simulated – says WHHS. You know, that's a the the correct answer is, of course, mono sounds the best. Some people have a major problem about fake stereo, and I've done a lot of videos about that. Um, I've talked about it at nauseum. I've got a dedicated video from years ago where I'm covering the microphone during half of the video. I filmed it um, in my backyard on the porch on the concrete. It actually was a good backdrop, so I was using that for a little while. Anyway, um, basically, for those of you that don't know, uh, fake stereo was pretty prevalent, especially in the early 60s when stereo was the new buzz term in, for, in, in terms of marketing. You know, like high def was the thing and then digital for, for audio in the 80s and 90s and then 4K and now ultra high def. So these marketing terms, uh, stereo was such a big one in the, in the early 60s that they started taking mono recordings and making them stereo by doing this process called rechanneled uh, reprocessed stereo what they would do was they would take the single mono track and they would duplicate it into dual twin track mono then they would phase shift ever so slightly one from the other to kind of throw it out of whack a little bit then they would put a high pass on one channel a low pass on the other one and then add some echo that was what fake stereo was it creates an interesting effect you definitely lose a little bit of presence and it sounds echoey it sounds off it sounds different that being said, all of that to say this, I don't hate fake stereo. I've got a lot of fake stereo records I enjoy listening to. I'm not one of these, if it's not mono, I won't listen kind of people. And there are people like that out there. I, I don't mind whatsoever. Greg says, um, Christmas records are awesome. Thank you so much. Old radios, AI, for the 2020s AI. Is, <laughs> I guess you could, yeah, that's, oh, that's the buzz term of the 2020 AI. Yeah, exactly. No, you're absolutely right. I noticed the glitter in your hair. Yeah, I've got some uh, um, uh, tinsel. I've had my hair tinseled temporarily. Those are clamped in. Thank you, by the way. You were the first person to – I've had this in my hair for 10 days at least at this point. I've even brought it up, and nobody talks about it. We have a joke, my wife and I, about this channel is that people are so interested only in the vinyl content that I can you know, say or do almost anything, and it just goes unnoticed. It's, so nobody has noticed this yet. So this is for the Vlogmas content over on my, on my wife's channel, Rain's Place. And um, yeah, th that's clamped in there. And um, it, it feels weird. There's three of them in there. And you could, uh, you know, it's it's very strange. I, I It's very odd. It's not something I would uh, have ever done before, but it's an interesting thing. Okay, record number two. Record number two is Mariah Carey's Merry Christmas. That's the same title as the Bing Crosby record, which may or may not make, it a, make an appearance on this show. And those two artists and records have more than that in common. Stay tuned for that. Anyway, this is one that people either love or hate or love to hate. 
and there's a lot of memes and I know all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. I love this music and I listen to it even when it's not Christmas. I am not ashamed to say so. It comes with a fancy illustrated um, slip sheet with lyrics and happens to be the coolest looking record that I have upgraded the sleeve. I upgrade the sleeve unless it's got a polyline paper sleeve. Prepare yourself. Tell me that's not the coolest looking record from a visual standpoint. It's a clear disc with red, white, and green splatter. Columbia label. I love it. Now, somebody said, and I've been unable to find it, that Walmart has a, uh, a version of White or Merry Christmas by Bing Crosby exclusive this year that features what they call fruitcake uh, vinyl. And I think that th this is how I would describe that or like candy mint or something like that, um, that they have that as well. I've not been able to find it. I've not been able to find it. And I'm all about, I'm all about vinyl or exclusive Walmart issues on colored vinyl and stuff. So if anybody has a link to that or more info, that would be cool. But no, the Mariah Carey Merry Christmas album. Uh, first of all, it, this is an incredible pressing. This was a Target exclusive, I think. And sounds great. I love it. I love the music. And um, yeah, so that's on my list for sure. I was a small child when this came out. We got a mint condition 78 of Bing Crosby. Of uh, Bing Christmas is good enough for me. That's awesome. Speaking of colors, have you come across any gray colored vinyl records? Gray. Like I said, gray colored hair. I'm like, yeah, I've come across quite a bit, especially down here. <laughs> Man, that's so weird. I used to have like an like a redhead beard when I was like um, a young man, and the, the it's been transitioned to. I went to an event last night, and people I had a Santa Claus hat on, which if you want to see that, is an incredible event. Will be over on Rain's Place channel on the video that's going up today. I won't give too much away, other than I was mistaken for Santa Claus on multiple occasions, and I'm kind of offended by that. <laughs> Now, I make a great Santa Claus when I want to, but I don't want to be a Santa Claus when I don't want to be. But anyway, gray colored vinyl? I don't think so. I don't think so. Somebody mentioned Bing Crosby on 78. Now, all of these records that I'm showing on my list for today are 12-inch um, vinyl records. But uh, yeah, this is the classic. Merry Christmas. This is the, I want to say, I don't know what year this one was. This is an earlier variant of it. Um, it doesn't, it has the second recording of White Christmas. It doesn't have the original 42, the one that you can't find anymore or, be, or as easily because it was destroyed and the plates had to be, or they had to re record it because the plates were destroyed. Also, this has the truncated playlist. This has two songs less than the vinyl LP that came out later, and which, like I said, we may be looking at here in a minute. And I've got some exclusive, do I still have those within arm's reach? That would be cool if I did because it would be fun to show you. I do happen to have my 7-inch record collection at arm's length here. Bear with me. That's a party record. Naughty party songs. One of my first videos I ever did was on that. Um, oh, yeah, this is a Hip Pocket Records. It's been a while since we talked about Hip Pocket Records. Postcard Records. Multiple postcard, postcard picture disc records. Here's a Bing Crosby. What is this? Adeste Fidelis and Silent Night. The seven inch. So anyway, I've got some seven inch records. A lot of Christmas material, on there, especially kids' Christmas material on seven inch. I want to show you a couple specifically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. From a purely just it looks cool standpoint. Isn't it cool to see that cover, which is famously the cover to the 12-inch album, uh, Merry Christmas, on a 7-inch record? This is cool. This is a single. This is uh, where the blue of night meets the gold of day. Is that? What is What's the other song? Oh, White Christmas. So it's White Christmas on one side. I don't remember this record actually having White Christmas, though. Let's find out together. God rest you merry gentlemen and white Christmas. This is not the record that belongs with this sleeve. It's 
cool, but it's not correct. Plus, it's got the 70s era MCA logo. Eh, probably not my favorite MCA era, at least from a graphic design standpoint. I'm trying really hard to keep it on the rails, you guys. You know how I am. I sidetrack like nobody's business. Nobody's business. I can. If there's one thing I can do, I can talk. Not intelligently or even entertainingly usually, but I can make sound happen, which has led to some interesting stories and legends within my family about me over the years. This is the other one. Just looks so cool. This is a dealer demo record. Yeah. It's got like uh, four songs from four of RCA's top artists of the era. I've seen these every once in a while, antique stores, and um, I wouldn't see it probably as much at a thrift store, mostly antique stores. But yeah, either both of those not worth anything, but they're fun. Do I have a Brenda Lee Christmas out? Boy, Brenda Lee is trending this year. Why is she trending this year? I mean, you hear rocking around the rock around the what is it? Rocking around the Christmas tree every year. I don't know why this year it's this big thing. I don't have an album of hers. I may, I don't even think I have a single, but I like her music. Also, a Patsy Cline tie-in. A very young Brenda Lee uh, was sort of mentored for a period of time. Went on a uh, a road trip kind of concert tour with Patsy Cline back in the day. I only have some Brenda on forty-five. As usual, I have something amazing video history coming from eBay. Some something amazing video history coming from eBay. I can't wait to hear about it all radios. By the way, you changed your thumbnail. I can't quite tell what it is. Jaden says, Oh, Jaden's asking old radios. I'll see record of Santa Claus hides in the phonograph. Yes. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I love that stuff. I would like to get some more novelty 78s, like the laughing record and things like that. The laughing record would be cool to find. Could you please play some music? I'd love that. The trick is with the copyright thing. Yeah, that's what's really tricky. So frustrating. If it was up to me, I would totally have like music playing in the background now. But the uh, bots and the scanners that YouTube uses would uh, probably pull the video down. That would be a that would be unfortunate. Recordology, you've heard of Trans-Siberian Orchestra. They play Christmas rock music. Yes, Greg. I went to, we went to a Trans-Siberian Orchestra concert in Denver a couple years ago. It was like not last Christmas, but the year before. And I was actually disappointed. I was actually disappointed. It was 98% rock concert, 2% Christmas. And well, it was all Christmas themed, but it was just not. The, the one song that they play that everybody knows is the one song that I liked. And the rest of it was just kind of not my cup of tea. I like rock, especially now. I'm more into it over the last several months than I probably have been in a long time. But even that being said, it just wasn't, I wouldn't go back. Let me just say that. The music, the recordings, absolutely. We've got CD, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, absolutely. Oh, you've got the laughing records. That's cool. I got something coming that only doctors, lawyers, and celebrities could afford in 1965. Wow. Wow, that sounds amazing. All right, next record on our list. What will it be? What is it? It is dun 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 dun. Let's reveal it with a slow and dramatic tilt up. Oh yeah. It is a Charlie Brown Christmas by the Vince Garaldi Trio, the original soundtrack recording of the CBS television special isn't that awesome and on the back we have the liner notes all that good stuff yes that is so cool all right now i wouldn't just get the plain version actually i would if that's all i could find <laughs> but this is an exclusive either walmart or target i think it's a walmart version on gorgeous green vinyl Looks much more beautiful to the naked eye than it does on camera. Kind of looks muted to the on camera there, but it's actually quite dazzling. And it's got some darker areas in it, which reminds me, somebody told me, somebody told me that my John Lennon Yoko Ono, that's not the right record, my John Lennon Yoko Ono, War is over record. 
which I'm finding very slowly here. Aha, similar color with similar dark areas was deterioration of the vinyl and was not made like this. I don't think that's true because I went out and looked and there's all of them look like this. Like they were all pressed to look like that. There's a black vinyl version. So I'm pretty sure that's a marbled vinyl. Anyway, Fantasy Records, um, Charlie Brown Christmas. This is a super quality pressing from what I can tell. Let me look at the dead wax and see if I can see anything exciting. By the way, did you guys notice a little note in the dead wax of the uh, of the new Red and Blue albums? Mm -hmm. Did you notice? I was I was kind of cool. I it sent me on a little research to see what they were talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but let's look on this one. Let's see if we can catch the light just right. What mysteries are hiding in the dead wax? Come on, I had it almost a second ago. Okay, nothing exciting. We got some numbers. We've got some handwritten stuff. We have an engineer, a mastering engineer. Okay, so it looks like it was um, mastered or plated by Jay Powell. That's the one that's handwritten in there. I love searching dead wax for interesting things. Um, also, a complete aside, total unrelated side note here on the topic of the Beatles red and blue albums again i got the colored ones the exclusives from the beatles store um and everybody was talking about the mixes and remember how it's like oh i like the mixes the mixes are great i don't know what everybody's talking about because a lot of people had issues with the new mixes i came across one i don't like i did i shouldn't say don't like. i still love it but i don't like the new version anywhere near as much as i like um the original and it's don't let me down on the blue album don't let me down and i'll tell you why <clears throat> what makes that song to me, what makes that song, Don't Let Me Down by the Beatles, is the keyboarding by, um, oh shoot, what's his name? Um, Billy, oh, I just had him in, in my mind. Billy, what's his name? Keyboardist. Arguably the eighth, um, or the eighth, the fourth, the fifth Beatle. Billy Preston, thank you. Um, so the keyboarding by Billy Preston juxtaposed to the guitar and the back and forth that they share on the original recording is even. And it sounds fantastic. And I love that about it. And I noticed on the new mix, the 2023 mix of Don't Let Me Down, it's buried. They buried it. Even on the solo, they buried it. It just sounds, it's. I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like it at all. It's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. All right, let me get caught back up here on comments. By the way, welcome in, everybody. I appreciate you spending some time. This won't be a super long show, but I wanted to uh, do this dual purpose. So it's a live show that's also going to be just a standalone video. Big C official, welcome in. My Goodwill got in some records in one day, and they were all Gordon Lightfoot. Somebody had a collection they donated or somebody donated they are all in my collection now. However, the biggest Christmas album I bought was the Peanuts Christmas album. Awesome. Ty Rocky says, I saw Trans-Siberian last year. It was the craziest concert I've ever saw. I would definitely see it. So you liked it? That's cool. I have Vince Guaraldi on record too. I got the green version. That's that's mine too. Was that Target then exclusive or was it at Walmart? Okay, so that's the one you have too, Big C. That's cool. Old radios. This item I'm getting was high tech when that special aired. Very cool. And the first one on the market. It's, what, you're such a tease. What, what, is the, what is the item? Maybe you're going to announce it later. I can't wait to find out. Got the original red and blue, and I'm fine with it. Yeah, it's a, the original. I said why. It's great. It's good to have the extra record of each set now. They have more music. So the play, the programming is a bit better because there's music that should have been included. You know, the original Red and Blue only had original Beatles compositions, and now they've got some covers mixed in. They got their licensing uh, straight. They don't mind paying a little licensing for it. Um, but, yeah, that, that, that mix <coughs> sounds great. Otherwise, I've got some allergies in my throat lately. Um, also, I can't believe how many people on YouTube, mostly in comment sections of um, of the now and then record by the way huge shout out 
to the person that sent me this. He's been a very, very generous soul. And just out of the blue says, you know what? I'm going to buy you this and sent it. And that was just a huge blessing. But a lot of people listening to the Now and Then uh, song and commenting and videos are saying about how they think the voice is AI generated. Oh, yeah, they used AI to generate people's voices. I hate that. It's not. They didn't use AI to generate his voice. All they did was use it to separate the background background noise out on the recording. It just filtered out the background noise. It's his voice, John's voice. But so much misinformation. It's just like, what? Jaden says, do you add new Christmas albums every year because that's my guilty pleasure? At least one or two. Yeah, I usually do. This year, though, I don't think I bought a Christmas record. Did I buy a Christmas record? My, la my latest haul of records is actually still right here because I haven't cleaned them yet. I don't think I bought one this year yet, a Christmas record. Maybe I did. I'll splurge on hardware, but boy, I'm tight on software. Nikki says, by the way, welcome in, Nikki. Last week I had a conversation with my uncles about my record collection. And on Friday, he bought me a stack, brought me a stack of his records unexpectedly. That's awesome. What did you find in there? What were the your favorites from that set? That was from that um, collection. That's awesome. Old uh, Greg says, Recordology, you've heard of Transiberian Orchestra, they play Christmas. Yep, definitely. We'll go around in circles. By the way, do you know the Sony handy cams of the 90s, beta movies of the 80s? This was the very beginning of it. Awesome. Can't wait to hear. Mark Covington in the house. Mark, haven't seen you in a while. Newport News, Virginia. Welcome in. I am very blessed and thankful, and even more so now that you are here. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, old radios. What I'm imagining are the old 60s Sony uh, tape machines where you thread the thread the one-inch tape reels. Is it that old? Or are we talking U-Matic? More of a 70s thing? I have a Umatic tape. I, I'm so old. I worked on Umatic when it wasn't. Well, it was it was actually deprecated even by the time I worked on it. But my broadcasting days go back to the Beta SP era. Cola Radio says, "How about Merry Christmas from the Family by Robert Earl Keane? Great song. I'll have to check that out." Tim Allen in the house. What the heck? It's like a celebrity get together here. We've got all these old timers, and when I say old timers, I mean friends of the channel from way back. Tim, welcome in. Thank you so much for joining. Look up the Sony CVC-2000. Okay, looking it up right now. Sony CVC-2000. The first home VTR. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what my first thought was. Yep. That's awesome. That's really cool. If it works without any capacitors, I'll be really impressed. WHHS Entertainment, have you heard of Jowdis Society Orchestra? I've got one of their singles on Edison Diamond Disc, number 50450. I, I have not, and I have maybe five Diamond Discs. I'd have to look through and see if it happens to be one of those. It's the camera for one. Oh, okay. Got their stuff on cylinder. It's the latest cylinder recording. All the kids have got it. Okay, next record on my top list of Christmas records for 2023. Not that they're all new to me or new records by any means. They are records that I am putting on my list for this year. And it is a holly dolly Christmas. Somebody said in, I think it was my uh, record store video. By the way, I'm surprised not as many people watch that video. If I'm watching a video and somebody goes to a records uh, show, I'm all over that. But I feel like with vinyl records, when you start talking about specific records that you like, people are, especially with me, because I listen to such a weird <laughs> uh, collection of music types, usually not what most people listen to, that people are like, eh, I'm not going to like any of the things he shows, which is a bummer because I try to show some variety as much as possible. But somebody said they saw this. I'm like, why would you pass that up? I didn't pass it up. I got it. I got it last year. This is a great record. And there's the flip side. And I would definitely recommend adding this to your collection. This is the um, sleeve. It is a paper sleeve. Ooh, shame on me. It's not even poly lined. Look at that. It is a harsh paper sleeve. That needs to go by the wayside. And I already gave away the big reveal here. 
It is pressed on white vinyl and it looks incredible. I love it. And this is on Dolly Parton's own label, uh, Butterfly Records, which is a usually those private labels, the celebrity owned labels are like subsidiaries of other major labels. So this is probably a Sony or UME uh, subsidiary. Let's see here. Um, Tone Music, Enterprise Butterfly Records under exclusive license to 12 Tone Music. So I'm guessing 12 Tone probably issued the vinyl release. But that's good. And my favorite song on here, and if, even if you don't buy the record or even get, listen to the record, look this song up on YouTube. You will laugh. You will be entertained. It is with Miss... By the way, there's a lot of... Uh, there's not a lot of... They're not all duets, but there are some duets. Miley Cyrus, Michael Buble. Of course, Miley Cyrus is the goddaughter of Dolly Parton. Um, Billy Ray Cyrus, Willie Nelson and Dolly Parton, uh, Randy Parton. I'm not sure. Is Randy her husband? I'm not sure if Randy is her husband. But the one that I love is All I Want for Christmas is You with Dolly Parton and Jimmy Fallon. Do yourself a favor and listen to that song. Just look it up on YouTube or anywhere that music is sold. Listen to whatever. All I want is you. All I want for Christmas is you with Dolly Parton and Jimmy Fallon. And thank me later because it's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. Jaden, thank you. Merry Christmas and a happy new year to you as well. Absolutely. Oh, man. Praying for a wonderful new year for every, everybody, all of us. Absolutely. And, and so thankful to have you guys there uh, as my friends and somebody to, you know, share, or, you know, we're, we're uh, what do they say? We're uh, like-minded people. We're kindred souls on this journey, learning and just entertaining and, enjoy, and enjoying and just so thankful for you guys. What do you think of Dolly Parton's rock album? I think it's pretty good. So I've been asked this question before. <clears throat> By the way, the next Dolly Parton record I would get would be the, um, and I did get her Record Store Day release this year, the uh, Monument Collect Singles Collection, which is her very earliest, like 1964. Like Patsy Cline left the chat and Dolly Parton entered the next year. It was very, very close. Um, but... What I would go for next is the, I think it's called Diamonds or something. It's like uh, Diamonds and Butterflies. It's a blue blue album cover with all these sparkles and things on it. A butterfly, of course, that's like her symbol. And I've been, by the way, to the Dolly Parton Stampede back when it was called the Dolly Parton Dixie Stampede. And uh, that was a lot of fun. There's one in Pigeon Forge. I went to the Branson one. That was sort of our vacation spot uh, when I was a teenager. I loved Branson so very much. Need to get back there. It's been a couple of years. But uh, that was a great show. It was a dinner show, very similar. If you've seen uh, the night version, we went to that. Uh, what is it? It's, it's here in Orlando and, and in LA too. Um, medieval Times. I was thinking of the cable guy. Welcome to Medieval Times, a journey into the past. Um, and he's, <laughs> I love it when Matthew Broderick and uh, Jim Carrey are there. And, and uh, she's like... Um, there is no silverware in medieval times. Hence, there is no silverware at medieval times. Would you like a refill on your Pepsi? And Matthew Broderick's like, they didn't have silverware, but they had Pepsi. Anyway, it was that kind of a show. And anyway, that album I would go for first. And also, to get to your original question, man, that was a sidetrack on a sidetrack on a sidetrack. It's okay. The rock album, there's a couple interesting songs. I like the duet with uh, McCartney. Um, but it's not my favorite. So I'll probably pass on that one. I do have the one before, uh, the two albums before the uh, Run Rose Run on CD. Mark Covington says, hey, Recordology, do you have a copy of Bing Crosby, Merry Christmas? I have a copy of 180 white vinyl. The cover says Geffen. The disc itself is the old black label. Yes, I do. And we're going to be looking at it in a minute. Um, I, I'm just going to say it. it's on the list, guys. We're going through my top eight. Uh, and also we have the original or one of the original 78 versions with a truncated playlist, last songs in the vinyl release, and a single as well, single issue, the same artwork. And I have two copies of Merry Christmas on 12-inch vinyl 
Um, I think they both are on the DECA uh, black and silver label. One stereo, reprocessed. We were talking about that a while ago. And one mono. Record Christmas is my favorite time of the year. I like to play Christmas music on my record. That's great, Greg. That's awesome. Absolutely. Jaden's VHS Archive 3.0. I love that name. Thank you. My favorite Christmas record now is called Charlie. Is Charlie Brown 45 version. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, next record up. This one might surprise you guys. But I um, I love this record a lot. It surprised me. I inherited this from my grandpa, this exact copy. So it's very special, but um, there's one song on here that makes it. Uh, it's a great album in its entirety, but John Denver's Rocky Mountain Christmas. And it's a gatefold, beautiful gatefold. Check that out. Look at that artwork. Isn't that evocative of just a cozy, cozy Christmas? This is just beautiful. There's the back. And uh, there's a lot, you know, it looks like a simple drawing, but if you look closely, there's a lot, a lot of detail, a lot of cool things to look at. Oh, I just love this record. Uh, this is 70s. It's got the 70s RCA logo there. This is probably early 75, mid 70s. Even though it's a gatefold, it's a single disc record on this. Um, White and gold, 70s RCA, as you can see there. And um, the reason why this made the list is because one of the songs is so, so, so good. And it is Aspen Low. So again, do yourself another favor. If you haven't heard it yet, put on uh, John Denver's Aspen Glow. You will, you will thank me later. And the rest is good too, but it's got you know Silver Rails, Rudolph. It's got some uh, sacred music on here as well. But John Denver, Aspen Glow, listen to it. I guarantee it'll be one of your top ten favorite Christmas songs. Okay, we've talked about it, we've hinted at it. It's not the last one on our list, so don't don't go anywhere yet. But check this out. This is a very good copy of Merry Christmas by Bing Crosby. And this is the tip on sleeve, which you, which basically means they took a sticker of the uh, of the cover and stuck it to a cardboard rigid, which is weird to me. I always thought before I found out that tip on sleeve were those sleeves that have a little cutout so you could kind of get the record in there a little better. That would make more sense. Um, but yeah, this is uh, an original DECA issue. This is DL8128, the long play 30. This is my mono copy. Yeah, so this is... My uh, so my mono copy is a little more worn than my rechanneled stereo one, but the cover art is nearly identical except for the catalog number. And um, a lot of people, when they're thinking about this album, they say, Oh, yeah, that White Christmas album by Bing Crosby. Nope, it's not called White Christmas, it's called Merry Christmas, and always has been. However, adding to the confusion, there are CD issues of this album that they did change it to White Christmas and kept the cover art, so that's probably why. My introduction to this album actually predates my interest in or knowledge of Bing Crosby, knowledge in records. Um, it goes back to the 80s. And I have strong, strong, strong positive memories of riding in a car back from my aunt and uncle's house on Christmas Eve. Because our tradition was on Christmas Eve, we would go to a certain aunt and uncle's house. And it was a good 45 minutes to an hour away from home. And we didn't usually travel, uh, except when we went on trips up to the mountains in Colorado. But on the daily, we didn't make long drives. So I remember it, fe it felt like we were going cross country. In reality, we were going across town, across Denver. But I have amazing memories of listening to this album on a cassette tape on my little Walkman. And so much so that uh, over I've collected this on multiple formats. So I've got the 78 version. I've got 45s from it. I've got a, multiple versions on C. Oh, no, I got one version on CD. I've got two versions on cassette, a bootleg and a regular. I did an entire episode about all the versions I, I have of this. The one main version I don't have is the uh, compact disc. Or no, I just said I have that. Is the 8-track. I don't have the 8-track version. Um, and uh, if there's a reel-to-reel, -reel, that must be rare. I don't have that either. So this... Um, is an incredible. I'm going to take this out of sleeve too, so you can see this. This is a, a beautiful, beautiful record, and I'm going to show it to you now. So yeah, we got the the silver and black Deca 
with its stars on there. Some of these decas are actually styrene. Let's see this one. This one sounds like styrene to me. Listen. I don't know if that's coming across. Probably not coming across, but it's got that sort of metallic ring. It does have rounded edges. The label's pressed. It's not adhered. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Uh, but this is just a great record. It's a bit worn. It's probably a VG+. Plus. Don't really see, eh, see a little bit of rainbow sheen on there. My stereo rechannel is in a little better condition. I always love telling this story, so I'm going to do it really quickly again. The uh, or There's two main versions to White Christmas, the recorded song. And the first one, the 1942 version, has slightly different arrangement. You can find it out there. It's not like it's impossible to find. But the one that we've all heard for years and years is the, the re-recording. I think it was 48. Was it 48? And um, that re-recording version is the one that permeates everywhere and everything. Every movie that has it, every compilation album has that version. But what happened is with the original recording is the uh, stampers got worn out and damaged. And when they wanted to make it again, they had to go back and re-record because they didn't have the metal parts. And so they hired the same orchestra. They used the same uh, arrangements. They did make some last-minute changes, as I said, but yeah. All right, we have a couple more to go. We're not done yet. We have two more records to go on my top eight list. Dun, 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 dun. I just list, just listening to Christmas records while watching live stream. That's cool. See, there you go. That's a copyright friendly way to do it. Sorry, I can't do that. I know Tim Allen does it. So Tim, how do you do it? Is it just if I play it quiet enough? Also, I've had this other problem where if I play music, sometimes it clips my audio. I use a Blue Snowball USB mic, and it's. I also have a fan going, so hopefully there's not a lot of fan noise. But I tried it once, and it was clipping the audio, and I haven't tried it since. <clears throat> old radios i have this one acetate record that was recorded by santa claus but david and kevin must have been a booth recording because the stuff with santa talking obviously sounds pre-recorded that's so cool it's a neat novelty idea sort of the early you know those apps where you can talk to santa it's almost like a really early version of that jane says do you have the album santa sends his best i do not except for the part where a different voice shouts David and Kevin's house. <laughs> That's so funny. Mark Covington, hey, Recordology. Do you, I love how you start every comment. Hey, Recordology. Do you plan on collecting on, do you plan on collecting any of Dolly Parton's old RCA country albums? I have a greatest hits on CD of RCA country material on vinyl. It's just that uh, Christmas album and then the uh, monument. Uh, singles that's the only <coughs> man my allergies today those are the only ones that i have right now i've got water on both ends of the desk here tim allen says i'm very glad that you and mrs recordology did not get eaten by alligators yes what's tim talking about alligators if you go over to rain's place on today's adventure we actually went to a, a place here in florida uh, it's the Lake Apopka Wildlife Drive. Where it's basically what it is. Is it's a an old farm that's been uh, in in use since the 40s, and there's all these canals that that zigzag near the giant Lake Apopka. And uh, what happened was they had over farmed it. They'd used pesticides that was destroying the ecology of the area, and the government took it over. It was like an eminent domain thing, I think. And now it's a publicly available drive as they're trying to reclaim the soil and the water. But you drive through and there's these giant canals and for like 10 miles, you'll just see alligators and birds and it's amazing. So you'll see like 12 foot alligators. And it's, they're just right there. We saw one in, in the show today. If you go over there and watch that, there's one alligators chilling out right two feet out. You could have reached your arm out and had it ripped off. It was amazing. Every time you drive through there, it's something else. So yeah, that's the uh, Vlogmas content over there. Definitely check that out. Thank you for asking, Tim. That was, uh, or thank you for mentioning. I'm glad too. I was tempted to get out. Mrs. Recordology threatened me. She's like, don't get out of the car. On second thought, get out of the car. <laughs> Just kidding. 
Um, but he, it's tempting to want to go interact with those guys. And you can get out of your car, but it's a matter of how wise it is, you know. Jaden says, can you do top 10 Christmas cassettes next? That's a good idea. I don't know if I have 10 Christmas cassettes. I need to, That's a good excuse to get some, though. I like that. Greg says, Recordology, you and Miss Recordology and your kids, Merry Christmas. Thank you, and Happy New Year to you as well, Greg and friend. I, I really appreciate uh, – I love the comments and uh, the sentiment. It's very, very kind of you. Absolutely. To you and yours as well, Greg. Old Radio says, actually, the voice was supposed to be Mrs. Claus, but the part with her voice was recorded too hot. Interesting. Bing used his newly acquired Ampex tape deck. That's it. So – in old radios hits on a topic that not a lot of people know about, and that is what a proponent of, record, of recording both video and audio on Ampex, which he bought into and was a huge investor. We have v- v- recorded videotape, probably wouldn't have happened for five to ten years. Interesting. So my my uh, apparently I, I just achieved the longest move streak that I've had in months, and I'm just sitting there. That's that's amazing. That's what the, the Apple Watch just told me. Um, anyway, yeah, he invested in it, and it was a big thing, and uh, we have him to thank for that. So it's possible he was all about finding ways to stay on the golf course, and he especially didn't like the idea of having to perform his radio show twice for the East Coast and the West Coast later in the day. So he's like, you know what, we're going to record this, and uh, was a major reason why re- magnetic recording technology advanced so early on. If you really want to go back, check out magnetophones that date back to occupied Germany. That's fascinating. Paper, reel-to-reel tape. (coughs) Christmas is one of my favorite days, says WHHS. Me too. Arguably my favorite day of the year. What do you do for Christmas? Did you put up your Christmas tree, says Greg. You know, we did put the tree up. Uh, usually our tr- our tradition is to put it up the day after uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, we joke, uh, my wife and I tease each other that I have a permit to decorate for Christmas. And it's me that wants to decorate it more than anybody. I've always been, ever since I was a kid, even, you know, when I was living with my parents, I was in charge of decorating for Christmas. So I, my permit goes into effect at midnight, uh, the, the night of uh, uh, 24th of November after Thanksgiving's over with. And expires on January uh, 2nd at midnight as well. So it's all got to be down. Oh, no, January 3rd. So I've got to have it down the day after uh, New Year's. I don't know if that'll happen. But that's the idea. Uh, what do we do for Christmas? We do Vlogmas almost every year. And uh, that's a blast. So we get to do a lot of events that way. And uh, obviously spending time with family is the most important thing. And I love to do that as well. Mark Covington. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, your recordology. What would you say is your all-time favorite Decca record label as far as the label itself? Smiley face emoji. Hmm, that's a good question. Decca label. I'd say from appearance, I, I like the rainbow label that we looked at a little while earlier. I like the look of that a lot. Um, but I, I really get pumped when I see a silver and black earlier label like we saw on the Merry Christmas album because it means it's an early Decca. And I'm excited about that. And I like the way those sound. And I like they're, they're kind of a crunchy, uh, hard material. Again, I think that those early Deccas are shellac, or not shellac, styrene. Um, it feels very styrene-esque. It feels more brittle and more glassy uh, than vinyl. It's hard to describe. But if you're holding that thing, you're like, oh, yeah, this is different. But they, they sound crunchy and more contrasty and harsh. But I just like them. I just like them. So I get excited when I see the old label. Same thing on a 78. Oh, oh, I'll tell you what. Okay, this is a diverge a little bit. But I get super excited when I see a black on orange coral label, which is a DECA brand. Because I really want to get – if I ever had a chance – said it before, I'll say it again. Grail record. Somebody said they were going to send me one. I hope that happens. Um, but a Patsy Klein on 78, ideally on coral. If you found a black on orange coral de- or a coral 78 Patsy Klein, that would be the grail of grails grails. Um, 
the grail of grails would be a Patsy Klein on silver and black Deca. The grail would be any Patsy Klein 78. Hopefully it happens. I hope that would be cool. Uh, if anybody, anybody's looking for a last minute Christmas gift this year, I can't think of one. I'd like my boss, Frank Shirley, right here with a big ribbon on his head. <laughs> I was watching Christmas Vacation. I couldn't help it. I love that movie. Chevy Chase makes me laugh every time. And I want to tell him it's so good. It's so, it's so quotable. I don't know if you guys are like me, but uh, in my family, it took my wife some time to get used to me doing this. It's just who I am. But I quote movies as part of conversation. Now she does it too. So um, that movie is imminently quotable. Greg says, I like your green hair, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate it. Jaden says, do you use vintage Christmas lights, ornaments, et cetera, on the tree? No, ours are modern. I do love vintage lights. Uh, the glass gets a little pale on the old ones, and they kind of bleach out. And then every year, you know, you churn through lights. Two or three sets has to get trashed every year. Seems like there's about a 10-year life cycle on lights now. I have really good memories of the the, the in what we call the indoor lights were the small ones. <clears throat> they had the little plastic crown that went around them. I love those things. I love those things. I would love to get those again. But no, we have modern lighting, some LED sets and things like that. Old radios. I'm going to make a video of that record. Which one? Old radios? Oh, of the, the Claws one, that custom one. Yeah. And send me the link on that. Okay. Let's get going on this. Next record in my top eight Christmas records of 2023 is Merry Christmas. Man, how many records are called Merry Christmas? By Johnny Mathis. This is quintessential mandatory Christmas music. There are some artists that are synonymous with Christmas. Obviously, Bing Crosby. But Frank Sinatra, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, uh, Andy Williams, anybody in the Rat Pack was definitely in on it. I mean, Johnny Mathis. These are classic, classic, and so many others. So many others. That's definitely not an exhaustive list. But a Johnny Mathis Christmas record is incredibly a must-have. I have two versions of this, which is really weird because I think they're both monos. If I'm if I'm right, I think this is a mono release. This, uh, but they have different cover art. I don't know why there's two different cover art variants of this. So I don't know if it's a, re, a reprint, but we've got a Goodwill sticker there. I paid a buck ninety nine. We've got a letter from Mr. Mathis himself. By the way, Johnny Mathis doesn't age. He looks pretty much the same as he always has, and he's still going. I think he released Christmas music last year. This is on a Columbia 6i, as you can see right there. Yeah, this is so cool. Great sounding record. His music is just, you know, if you had to pick a Christmas record to be on a desert island with, or if for whatever reason you found yourself in a situation where you had to pick only one Christmas record to listen to, you wouldn't be wrong for picking this. This is absolutely one of my absolute all-time favorites. <clears throat> you made the – wait, you made the video already. You're watching a video. How can you make a video? That's productivity. This kid makes videos while he's watching other videos. I hope my wife isn't watching because she'll be like, why can't you do that? <laughs> I'm not a superhuman like old radios. How does he do it? That's good. He's like, first comment is, I'm going to make a video of that. And then the next comment literally is, I made a video of that. <laughs> That's great. Mark Covington. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, Recordology. <laughs> do you have any vinyl records on the Blue MCA Coral rainbow label what i have the blue coral on something somewhere i don't think i've ever seen a blue coral rainbow i'm gonna look that up mca blue coral label oh yeah okay 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 yes 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 okay okay this is like the og uh, to me, I yes, I do. Okay, yeah, that's a very '70s. Um, yeah, that's cool. I've got, I've got a lot of '45s with a version of that. Yes, that is a great. And I've even got one or two of the picture sleeves of that. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks for the uh, the memory there. 
Next record, final record on the list, Recordology's Top 8 Christmas Albums 2024. And there's so many that I need. I need to get. So what do I need? I'll talk about that in a minute. What I need to get, what I want to get is, drum roll, please. Bam! Elf. This is a fantastic compilation. I believe we gave one of these away a couple of years ago on the channel, brand new. Um, this is one of the best, if not the best, Christmas compilation records you will ever own. Music from the motion major, major motion picture. Great movie. But even if you've never seen the movie, you don't intend to. Or, you know, whatever, you will, you should pick this up. It's good. You know, I'll show you the playlist in a minute, but it includes a little inset piece. Hold on a second. Incoming transmission. <laughs> I wish I could read this to you, but I would get in trouble. Final record. <laughs> That's funny. Basically, it's a letter that says, this is great music. I hope you like the movie, but if not, you should still like this record. And it is on a really cool-looking blue pressing with a picture of Buddy the Elf there. It's a great movie. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. I've seen clips, like, all year long. I'm on. I'm such a Christmas nerd. I belong to all those. Christmas all year round groups where they share Christmas tree pictures and stuff. The playlist, Louis Prima, Pennies from Heaven. Some of this stuff isn't really Christmas songs, but they work well in this context. Ella Fitzgerald, Sleigh Ride, uh, Lena Horn, Ferrante and Teacher, Leon Redbone, Jim Reeves, Brian Setzer, love Brian Setzer, Leon Redbone again, Eartha Kit. I do have Eartha Kit. I don't think I've got like Eartha Kit uh, 45 somewhere. It doesn't have Santa Baby. Um, it's got Sebon. That's a good song. Leon Redbone again, Eddie Arnold, and Billy Preston. We're just talking about Billy Preston. Do yourself a favor. Pick this one up. It's a great, great record. Quality thick pressing. I feel like it's 180 grams. Uh, but that is a fantastic, fantastic record. Now, finally, before I disconnect here, the um, record records that I would like to get, Christmas records, and that's a great question, great segue, way to end the show. I would love to get the Frank Sinatra Merry Christmas or whatever his Christmas album is called. I have it on cassette and I recently picked it up on CD. So I did get a Christmas album this year, but it was on CD. Uh, that would be great on vinyl. And I would like to get some Ella Fitzgerald, both Christmas and non-Christmas. I would love to get some Dean Martin. And I do have an Andy Williams record. I think, is it Christmas? Oh, Perry Como Christmas. That's another mandatory artist. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> all right you guys um let's see here um we're gonna close it out i want to run through these comments uh, dun, 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 dun. pennies from heaven absolutely it's a great version i got the video uploaded wow this guy's productive saw that many video is new and finally mark covington says can you please show me the first five or six christmas records you've shown on this video okay just for you, friend of the channel, we're going to run through it very quickly. We ended with Elf, and before that, we had Johnny Mathis, and before that, we had John Denver, Listen to Aspen Glow and Thank Me Later. We had Bing Crosby. We had Dolly Parton, and we had Vince Guaraldi Trio. We had Mariah Carey, and we started it all with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That, my friends, is going to do it for today. Thank you so much for joining us in the live. Thank you for being there. We really appreciate it. Again, go over to my wife's channel and link is down below. Check that out. We're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Alligators are today. And then tomorrow, ooh, it's just going to be an incredible journey. You're not going to want to miss it. But that's going to do it for today. Happy record hunting. We'll see you next time.